Hello and welcome to the beautiful but blustery Forest of Arden Marriott Hotel and Country Club in England for the Legends Tour Highlight Show. Here's what's coming up over the next action-packed hour. I chat to this week's host, Peter Baker, about the history of this fantastic course. Now, I'm over in sort of Wolverhampton, so it's a bit... Don't get the geography wrong. <laughs> Gary Wollstonehome gives us a masterclass with the wedge. And get it going towards the hole. Oh! Well, there we go. We'll reveal what happened when we mic'd up Sweden's Jochen Hegman and his caddy, Joey Jones, as they played the tricky par 5 12th here at the Forest of Arden. That also takes the trees on the right out of the play, It right? does, yeah. Just yeah. a little left of that sign there. Yeah. OK, cool. And, of course, we'll have the best of the action from this week's main event, the Farm Foods European Senior Masters. The last time we saw you was up in Aberdeen for the Scottish Senior Open, where Thomas LeVay made it back-to-back -back wins on the Legends Tour. And he's got it at the second time of asking. And it is back-to-back -back wins on the Legends Tour for the Frenchman Thomas LeVay. That victory for the ever-popular Frenchman meant the order of merit looked like this as the players arrived here this week. Thomas has a hat-trick of wins in his sights, so I caught up with this week's host, Peter Baker, to find out why this wonderful course is the perfect setting for a place in the Legends Tour history books. I'm here with this week's host, Peter Baker. Thank you for joining me. You're a bit of a local lad, is that fair? You, I wouldn't quite call it that. No, I'm over in sort of Wolverhampton, so it's a big... Don't get the geography wrong. <laughs> it was a big rivalry between sort of black country, where I am from, and Birmingham. So, yeah, more uh, Wolverhampton that way. Yeah, I did know you're a Wolves fan, really, so I, I walked straight into that one, didn't I? Let's talk about this area. Very, clearly very special to you. This course is magnificent. What makes it special? I think it's the quality of the holes, really. I think there's an enormous amount of really good holes here at the Forest of Arden. And I think that uh, you've got to be a good ball striker, good putter, good short game. The whole thing, you know, really tests you out. So I think that's that's the strong point of the course. There's no weak holes at all. What kind of game is going to win it this week, then? Um, I think you're a good ball striker. Somebody hits it really well, uh, you know, very good around the greens, a complete package, really. You're not going to get away with anything around here. It's um, it's a really good test of your ball schools. West Midlands is pretty good for golf and sport, actually, I can't help but notice. Yeah, they've got, uh, well, in, in Birmingham, they've got the Commonwealth Games coming up. Uh, that, that's a big thing. A lot of... Uh, decent football teams around, shall we say. Um, so it's a big big sporting area, lots of golf courses in and around, and, uh, yeah, it's a big sporting area. Yeah. The setup here by the Marriott, for, for amateurs as well as pros, actually, is really fantastic, but as an insider, tell me what's going to help you win it around here. I, th I think for the, for the amateurs, I'd encourage all the amateurs to take one extra club. No doubt about that. It, uh, it does play a bit longer than it looks to right. the yardage, so I, I certainly encourage them to take one more club. And I think with the pros, really, it's playing the par five as well, particularly on the back nine. There's a couple of par fives there where you can probably reach, but you've got to go over water. So it's uh, sort of decision time, and uh, it will have a big part to play by the end of the week. Have you got a favourite hole on this course? Oh, I, mean, I think the 18th is a fantastic hole, I've got to say. It's a great finishing hole. Uh, you're always pleased to get three, no matter what position you're in. And I think that's probably my, my favourite hole, I think. Uh, we can't look ahead to this week without talking about Thomas LeVay uh, because he's going for three in a row, which would write him in the, in the Legends history books. But also, he's the defending champion of this tournament the last time it was played. That's right. Yeah, going back a couple of years, he won well round here. And, of course, you know, winning two in a row already, uh, going for your third and also defending champion, that, that's an amazing thing. And uh, he's certainly got the game to do well again. And uh, he's, uh, he must be full of confidence and got a great chance. It's funny, really, because going back to Ireland, um, he had a sort of a back spasm and he was really struggling and I remember speaking to him after and he said, well, you know, I'm not sure we're going to be able to play the next few weeks. Uh, anyway, whatever happened in between, <laughs> certainly did the trick. He won two in a row, he's run round here previously, so, um, and, and Thomas hits it well enough to, to sort of win round here, so it's, um, he'll be looking forward to it. I think he also might have beaten Marcus Breer here last time as well. That's right, he did, yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's two guys who uh, should be up there at the end of the week. Went toe-to-toe -to -toe last time out. Good luck this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Georgie. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up, we go over to the 12th hole, where we mic'd up Sweden's Jochen Hegman and his caddy, Joey Jones, as they tackle the tricky par five. 
Well, obviously, this is one of the four par fives on this golf course this week, and it's the first one on the back nine. And all the par fives are going to be key to winning this golf tournament. Anybody doing well are going to play the par fives extremely well this week. So for us, this is obviously the be beginning of the back nine, and hopefully by Sunday we'll be in contention, and this is where the hunt starts. Introduce the gentleman to your wife. <laughs> this, this is Joey Jones. <laughs> so we've known each other for a bit more than 20 years. And then, to be honest with you, to go to a golf tournament without Joey feels quite empty at the time. And, and, and you know, he, he plays the game through my golf bag. So it, it, it's, not, it's almost like we've been two of us playing, which is great. You need to get on. You know, I, <laughs> you know when we were on the main tour, I probably spent more time with you than I did with my wife and your wife and, and everything else. So you, you have to get on, obviously. You, you, on a friendly basis and a professional basis as well. It's all about that relationship and get the bus going even on a bad day. And even if, you know, if I make a bad decision and might just make a five footer for bogey, it needs to be a good bogey. Come on, Hagen, that's great. Let's have a birdie on the next. It's not so much about him and me. It's about us getting a performance out here so we can win this golf tournament. This whole, is, you know, first of all, tee shot is going to be really crucial because t is going to set you up for maybe having opportunity to get here in two. Other than that, the layup as well, it's not so easy and straightforward because if you do lay up to a number, which we always try to do, lay up to your perfect number, let's say an 80 shot, which is a full shot with your lob wedge, well, this green is going to create a lot of spin and you're going to have a hard time controlling the ball and that is water in front and we are going to see ball spinning back into this water. Again, laying up a bit further down, hit a shorter shot with the same club, take some spin off or back off till you get into your not so groovy clubs, the pitching wedge and the nine iron and control the spin again. This is a tricky hole, but you need to burden this as many times as possible. For me, three times this week is a good number. Joey, can I have a look at Sky Caddy, please? Yes, and there you tell, go. Me, tell me the numbers here. 240, maybe 225. So, I mean, it's into the wind today, so I don't think you're going to get up. <laughs> I'm going to try to prove you wrong. OK. But we are looking for a driver down the right wing here to get onto that green. We need to get Correct. an angle onto the green and we need to hit a good one. Yeah. So, let's get on with it. Driver, yeah. So, I'm teeing off a little bit on this side to kind of give myself a bit of room, OK? You see the little stubby tree? The stubby tree, yeah, yeah I can yeah. see that, yeah. Just 10 yards left of that. All right, good, thank you. Should be perfect there. That should work. Yeah. If it gets a bounce forward, you should you have yeah, a sniff and get an upper two. Yeah, we have half a chance of getting a home in two. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Right, Joe, that's in position 1A. Eh? That's all we can do from the yeah. tee, isn't it? Decent lie. Oh, well, I'm thinking now that I've got to find a good number here, and this green in particular is sitting against us and we're playing into the breeze. And it's been a bit of rain lately, so we've got a soft green ahead of us, meaning to me that I can't put a third shot after the second shot into that green with spin on it. I need to control the third shot. So now Joe and I are looking into a number where I can find that control. OK, so 160, Heggy, will leave us 90 um, with this wind. Add another 20 to that, so it's going to play a 110 shot. Oh, all right, OK, so I just a little punch, five on into the breeze to control sure. the height of it, and uh, that also takes the trees on the right out of play, it right? It does, yeah, just a little left of that sign there. Right, OK, cool. That yeah, looks good. Hold your line. That should be perfect should there, be right? Should be fine there. OK, let's work that well. 90 to the pin is what we're looking for. Into this wind, I'd say it's playing 110, 112. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Hang on there now. You control the spin well there, mate. Oh, it's just hang on to the front edge. Yeah, it's fine. Ooh. It's fine. That will be good, Joey. That's a good uphill putt right there. Good, good shot. Let's go and make that birdie, Joey. Right. So what do you see, pal? Not an awful lot. No, it's a bit of right to left, though. Yeah, it's maybe, coming up that hill, isn't it? Maybe just outside the, your right. Yeah, I'm going to go about two balls yeah. outside that right. OK. Bit up the hill. Up the hill, OK. Yeah, good four. Well done. Well done. There you go. That's what we need to do. Here you go. Well played. Well That's all for part one. After the break, Gary Wollstenholme gives me a masterclass with the wedge, and we'll have the best of the action from the Farm Foods European Senior Masters. Don't go anywhere.
Legends Tour highlight show from the beautiful Forest of Arden Marriott Hotel and Country Club. Before we get to the best of the action from the Farm Foods European Senior Masters, here's what happened when one of the most popular players on tour, Gary Wollstoneholm, gave me a much needed masterclass with the wedge. I'm joined by one of the greatest amateur players of the game, Gary Wollstoneholm's with me. Good morning. Good morning. How lovely to see you. Let's just start with your golfing career, shall we? Because you are the all-time Walker Cup point scorer. You're yeah. prolific in Walker Cup. Yeah. Is anyone ever going to surpass you? I doubt whether that will be beaten. And this is my, my England points record and uh, caps as well. I play for England 218 times. The next uh, most cap player is uh, Peter McAvoy at 153. So Way off. I doubt whether those sorts of things will ever uh, be beaten because it was a different era. Things have changed inherently now with youngsters turning professional so young. And you can understand why. The, the rewards are huge, but there's a lot of competition. It's an hour-long show, so, and I can't, I can't do the whole 18 holes, but you beat Tiger Woods. Yes, I did, yes. It was at uh, Royal Porth Call back in 1995. I didn't get picked for the foursomes in the morning. I knew as soon as uh, uh, he hadn't been uh, asked to play in the first two singles matches, because on the Friday, they announced the pairings for morning and afternoon. Yeah. And I can remember Gordon Sherry, who's six foot ten, uh, standing next to me and turning around and, and shaking my hand and said, you've got him. Now, he wasn't on his day. I can, I can assure you of that. He went out of bounds three times. So in some That's respects, not your problem, no, Gary. No, 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 I know that. <laughs> I'd like to think that I put him under the pressure to do that. We'd been nip and tuck all the way down. The last few holes, we were all square. And then, yeah, he, he hoiked it out of bounds again uh, that third time. So uh, that's, that's where it all happened. But uh, yes, that started me off. And I'm sure it'll be on my tombstone, the man that beat Tiger. Let's talk about the Forest of Arden this week. Yeah. Quite a long course. Yes, very. How do you feel it's playing? There's a lot of long par fours. So that's going to be the key, is making those pars on those really tough holes. And uh, the greens here, by the way, are very quick. They're running it at 11 and a half at the moment, uh, even with the rain, which is going to create a lot of issues, uh, I can assure you. Well, uh, good luck with your putter. <laughs> a couple of notable winners here. Colin Montgomery's won here, Thomas Bjorn's won here as well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite a prestigious tournament. It tests every facet of your game. You've got to drive it well. Uh, because there's dog legs that you've got to hit the ball past to be able to give you access to the green. And again, I go back to this factor that uh, you're not going to hit every green. So it's then whether you're going to be able to uh, make a par when perhaps, um, you know, you might not have done. Gary's one of the best short game players on tour, so you're very kind of going to give us a few tips and a bit of a masterclass? OK. All right, thank you very much. Let's go. Chipping is a nightmare for a number of amateurs. You're one of the best. So just give us um, an idea of, first of all, the things that you see amateurs do badly all the time that well, can be fixed. That's, it's a really good question because I see it a lot. You want to try and visualise what the shot's going to be like. So you've almost got to visualise how the ball's going to fly through the air, what it's going to do when it lands. Yeah. And there's lots of different ways of being able to create either backspin or less backspin, depending on what you need. So, for instance, in this particular case, I'm going to have the club face slightly open, and then I'm going to maintain my height and my eye on the ball, because that's the big problem. This is what tends to happen with most amateurs. And they want to look up. Yeah, I do they that. They want to... Because they're nervous. <laughs> yeah, I do that. And everybody does it. Yeah. We all do it under certain circumstances. All I'm trying to do is keep the hands nice and soft and just brushing the grass, going through, keeping the back of the left hand moving ahead of the club leading edge. OK. If you can do that, then you'll always make a decent contact if you keep your eye on the ball. OK. So that's the key thing. So. I've got the idea of where I want to land it. My balance is nice and square in the uh, uh, stance. And all I'm trying to do now is just push it forwards and get it going towards the hole. Oh. Well, there we go. And lift out! <laughs> but it is literally as simple as that. A lot of golf, including putting, is about keeping your eye on the ball. Yeah and making sure that you don't break down with your hands. And that's really key. Gary, good luck this week. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. That's my pleasure. Here's what happened when a host of famous faces strutted their stuff here at the Forest of Arden in the Celebrity Pro-Am.
The Celebrity Pro-Am was the perfect way to kick off the week of the Farm Foods European Senior Masters and allowed the pros and a bunch of famous faces to show off their skills in a fun but competitive team competition before the serious stuff got underway on Friday. Well, my playing partner is just what he is, but uh, <laughs> I played with him before. We met Alan before. He's a great golfer, <laughs> low handicapper, and, uh, you know, he's making some really good pars out here and even birdies, so we're having a great time. Listen, I'm five down, that's all you have to know, right? <laughs> I know it's a team game, but right now I'm five down, so I've got plenty to bring. Notable names enjoying themselves out on the course included the former Scotland footballer Alan McAnally, Olympian Derek Redmond, oh, and that's Legends Tour chairman Ryan Howsam. <laughs> it's going to be good fun. The course is in great, Nick. The greens are super quick. So we've got a great group. The golf might not be vintage, but at least the uh, the conversation will be. However, when all was said and done, it was the team from Champions UK and their victory brought the curtain down on a fantastic day of golf in the Forest of Arden. I thoroughly enjoyed it and the team's done a great job. OK, let's get down to business. On Friday, a handful of talented amateurs got to play alongside the legends in a team alliance format. Here's the best of the action from this unique golfing experience that allows people like you and I to get up close and personal with the pros while they're playing in tournament conditions. Fun and friendship is what it's all about in the Team Alliance on the Legends Tour, as well, Tony Johnston, as a chance for the amateur golfers to get an up-close and personal experience of playing alongside the Tour's legends. Yes, and I think the amateurs absolutely love it. You're in there, you know, you experience the heat of battle, and instead of watching from behind the ropes, you're up close and personal with them, see how they all do it. But you've got to control those nerves. Yeah, you certainly have if you're going to stand a chance of being in contention for the team prize. Some good golf out there. And here's a man who's been loving the Alliance experience this week, Andrew Turner at the par 3 15th. Really enjoying it today. Uh, the course was in excellent condition despite the wet weather this morning and it was good to play with the professionals. Excellent. Well, playing alongside Richard O'Hanlon, it was a podium finish for Andrew, so an excellent effort from both of them. A variety of swings, a variety of breaks. <laughs> it's been an unexpected joy, actually, so far. Well, there are some really talented amateur golfers taking on the Forest of Arden test, even with the pressure that comes with trying to perform alongside your Alliance Pro. Playing with the pros in a comp like this, how it's different to playing in your average stroke play back at your course. The extra pressure by being with the pros, being announced on the tee, um, but being able to watch them and then managing to build a score, you learn a lot with these experiences and it, that's what it's all about. It's all about experience and it, it's a fantastic day out. Wonderful. Well, whatever he learned, he learned it well because Richard Anderson playing alongside Legends Tour winner Gary Marks finished at the top of the leaderboard. They combined for a nine under par 63 and just pipped Scott Reed and Clark Dennis with Andrew Turner and Richard O'Hanlon in third. Right, time for the best of the action from the main event. Here are the highlights from the first two days of the Farm Foods European Senior Masters. Major champions are European Tour winners and Ryder Cup stars. That's what this tour is all about. And two times Legends Tour winner Tony Johnston, they still love to compete, don't they? They sure do. That urge never goes away. And you're out there with guys like Woozy, Peter Baker. You're playing with your buddies that you've competed against for 30 years. It's wonderful. Well, Thomas LeVay is fresh from back-to-back -back wins at the Legends Open to France and the Scottish Senior Open as well. But if he was going to complete the hat-trick, he'd need to go a low on the final day. The Frenchman four over through the first couple of rounds. So LeVay with work to do, but in good form. Well, Tony, here's the tournament host. And that swing hasn't changed, has it? Hasn't lost much speed either. Bakes, wonderful guy and a superb player. And here's one of his good friends, Ian Woosnam, still going strong in his 60s. Yeah, despite all the back issues he's had his whole career, Woosie's still out there competing. Still flashes it, by the way from one legend to another. The 1999 Open champion, Paul Laurie, they call him Chippy, and you can see why, can't you? Laurie in the hunt, as he has been in almost every tournament this season. 
After a disappointing opening round, senior open champ Stephen Dodd came charging back into it with a second round 67. Yeah, nice turnaround from him. Paul Streeter, Rookie of the Year in 2018. He showed some good form at the Irish Legends event and a good solid week beckons again for the Englishman. Well, having just turned 60, the 2002 French Open champion Malcolm McKenzie showing he's still got a bit of game. Go on, tied for the lead after round one. Fairways and greens, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, let's hope that plan works. Uh, um, if it does, I could be in the mix um, on Sunday. Well, unfortunately, Malcolm struggled in the second round, but plenty of others were moving into contention. Here's the informed South African, James Kingston, Tony. Yeah, James is having a great run of form. He's throwing in seconds and thirds. He's still trying so hard to get that first win. It's annoying him now. Two eagles in an opening 69 for Clark Dennis, the five-time Legends Tour winner from Houston, Texas. About a second round 75 saw him slip back. Here's Argentina's Rafael Gomez, beaten by Dennis in a playoff in Italy a couple of years back, but seeming to thrive in the tough weather conditions. Can he bag his first Legends Tour victory at the Forest of Arden? If he's going to, he'll probably have to finish ahead of Marcus Breer, the Austrian who lost out to Thomas LeVay in a playoff in Scotland recently. Breer looking good again. Keep the high numbers off the scorecard, because as you see, the scores are not really low. So if you keep it together and if you have the odd round, maybe level bar only and two, three unders, that could be enough at the end of the week if the weather stays like this. The wind makes it a bit tricky. Playing all sorts of wonderful golf this week. Marcus Priya, how about that for a bunker shot? Got that? Absolutely we have. <laughs> I love that bunker. My bunker. My bunker. It was exactly the one I hold. The Breer bunker, we'll nickname it that. Well, the weather unfortunately got worse and worse during Saturday's second round. Eventually, the course could take no more with the greens flooded. Play was stopped and round two was completed on Sunday morning. Good weather for them. And let's take a look at the leaderboard through two rounds and a three-shot lead for Marcus Breer in search of that first Legends Tour victory over Rafael Gomez. After the break, we'll have all the action from the third and final day of the Farm Food European Senior Masters. See you in a couple of moments. Welcome back to the Legends Tour highlight show from the Forest of Arden Marriott Hotel and Country Club. Time now for the best of the action from an enthralling final day at the Farm Foods European Senior Masters. Nice to see some blue skies and sunshine for the final round of the Farm Foods European Senior Masters, Tony Johnston. What an effort these greenkeepers have put in here. They were up at two o'clock with squeegees and pumps. Torrential rain overnight, which caused that major delay. Good start from Peter Baker, our tournament host. This for birdie at the second. Needs to go low and get a bit of help from the leaders as well. To Peter Fowler, Chucky, as he's known, and his tee shot at the fifth. And he would hold that. Nice bounce back after a bogey at four. And that would take him under par once again for the day to James Kingston and his second at the second, Tony. Taking dead aim. And loving it. Oh, a bit of action too. Yeah, beautifully played. Great distance control. And Kingston will make birdie from there to Paul Laurie. He's third at number three. The par five. Not too far away from an eagle. And he also would make birdie there. And what about our leader, Marcus Breer? This at the third. Dancing around the hole. Unfortunately, he didn't hold that one. So just a par for Breer. He piled the fourth as well. And Breer leads by three still from Rafael Gomez with Kingston, Laurie and Dennis all at one under, seven behind. 
Looking good for the Austrian. Out we go to the fifth tee, the par three. It looks like there's a lull in the wind, but there isn't really. If you look up at the top of the trees, and he tugs it left, finds that green side bunker. Always a bit more difficult, the bunker sand, when you've had that sort of rain overnight. To Kingston at the sixth hole, second shot to the par four. Thinks he's got a flyer, begging it to get down. And listen, should have shut up, James. <laughs> Bit of rainfall once again. We've had too much of that. We don't want too much more either. Breer out of the bunker at five. Or is he on the upslope here? He might be, you know. He's not setting it up, setting up to it like a bunker shot. No, it had stayed out. And that's a smart little chip. Perfect distance control. Doesn't really need to do too much out there today, does he? Needs to stay ahead of Gomez, but the others, as I say, with a lot to do. Paul Laurie, seven behind, his third. Found some juicy stuff here. Oh, yes, and he's got some grass between club and ball. It's come out like a rocket. Mini flyer. Hard to predict those. Yeah, he'll do well to make his par there. You know, it's been a long day for a lot of these players. Marcus Breer with 30 holes to play on Sunday. 12 from his second round. That had to be completed this morning. Let's go to Paul Streeter. And he's birdie putt here at six. That's a superb effort. It is seriously slow from the front of that green. He's judged that well. He's playing with Laurie and Kingston. Marcus Breer with Rafael Gomez and Clark Dennis. And Breer for the up and down. Nicely done. Five straight pars to start the final round for Breer. Looking a bit ugly out there, isn't it? Quite heavy rain now, yeah. He'll, he'll do well to look up at the skies and start praying. James Kingston. Birdie chance for the South African at the sixth. Very nicely done by James Kingston, a two-time winner on the European Tour, yet to notch his first Legends Tour victory. So he gets it to two under. Still six behind, mind you. And in the meantime, Laurie for the par. No, chasing after it. He knew when it was five feet out, it wasn't going underground. Still a decent putt, but it is a bogey for the Scotsman. He did manage to birdie number seven. So did Marcus Breer. That was uh, his first birdie of the day, and he now leads by five, surely on his way to victory. They did a tremendous work overnight, and uh, no, the greens are still okay, and, and you would expect them to be soft after that rain, but no, all, all respect to the crew. Yeah, well done, the greens keeping team here at the Forest of Arden. Let's go to the ninth. Tough driving hole, this one, Tony. Sure is. This was always, I think, one of the toughest holes to drive at Forest of Arden. Down a chute, trees right, trees left. There are hazards. You see a hazard there on the right. Easy to make a mistake. Any time you hit that fairway, you're overjoyed. And from nine, let's slip back to the par three eighth. Beautiful par three, 166 yards. Over water all the way. Lake goes right up to the front edge of the green. Runs down the left of the green. 166 yards, but it certainly makes you think, and the wind swirls, it does some weird things. Let's see how our leader, tournament leader, Marcus Breer, handles this one. It's one of those holes, the ripples go one way, the clouds are going another, the, the trees are blowing a different way, you throw up grass, it goes a fourth direction. Feels a bit hit and hope you're always pleased to have it dry and puttable. So apart from that, it's fairly straightforward. Yeah, other than that, it's quite an easy par three. <laughs> Let's head up to James Kingston, who has found the fairway at the ninth. Best Legends Tour finish to date. Share of third place in France. 
beast of a par four, this ninth hole. Long, swooping, sharp dog leg. Tee shot is difficult, second shot, not much easier. It's always a long iron in here and a pretty exposed green. Let's see what Kingston can do with this one. Giving it the lean as he lost it right. Oh, yes, he has. Straight back into the wind. You only got to get a little bit of side spin on it, can veer off quite sharply. Paul Laurie has driven it a bit further down this hole, just in the first cut of rough. Tell you what, that is a big drive. It's 428 yards into the wind, and he's just smoothing one in there and beautifully controlled out the rough. An expert, you'd have to call Paul Laurie in the wind. Back to eight, birdie parts for Bria. See how the wind is gusting from that flag there. Has he given it enough? Well, it had the, uh, the pace. It's not quite the line, but good safe part. The man from Vienna, four times a runner-up on the Legends Tour. Two of them here at the Forest of Arden in this tournament. So he'll be hoping to go one better out there today, and he's in good position. To Kingston, his third at nine. Again, it's a, a story of trying to control the spin out of this stuff, and it's not easy to do. Oh, it's come out spin free, hasn't it? The wind might have been a contributing factor there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Wind's knocked it down, taken all the spin out of it. Trouble off the tee for Rafael Gomez at the eighth. So this is for par. No, not to be. Disappointing bogey. Couple over through the first eight holes. Making the job of Marcus Breer that little bit easier. Paul Streeter. Playing with Laurie and Kingston. This is a par putt. And that's very nicely done. Kingston. To save his par. I'd be disappointed not to make par here. He had a beautiful tee shot. It is going to be a bogey, though. Yes, and the first drop shot today for the South African. But all in all, in the conditions, good front line, two under to the turn. Paul Laurie, after that superb second shot into nine for his birdie. Oh, and that can make you rage after two fantastic shots, leave it short in the mouth. Yeah, frustration for Laurie. He's one under through the first nine holes. Plain sailing so far for Marcus Spreer, but some tough holes coming up for the Austrian as he tries to secure his breakthrough win. After the break, we will have the best of the action from the final few holes of the Farm Foods European Senior Masters. Believe me, it's not to be missed. the Legends Tour highlight show where it is time for all the action from the final few holes of the Farm Foods European Senior Masters. Ten holes for the leaders to play in the Farm Foods European Senior Masters Championship from the Forest of Arden. Wonderful layout. And this apart part for Marcus Breer. Hasn't dropped a shot yet today. But has now. Sadly, not his last one, as the Austrian went on a bad run, dropping more shots at 10, 11 and 14. Paul Laurie, meanwhile, into the 12th. Getting better and better for the Scot. I don't worry, Paul, because he would hold that one. 
James Kingston with a nice bounce back after a double bogey at the 11, a birdie for him at 12 as well. And to the man lying second, Rafael Gomez. This at the 12th. Over the water, nicely nipped. Get some spin. And that would produce his first birdie of the day, but still two over par on his round. So all of a sudden, it's got a bit tight for Bria. His six-shot lead through eight holes is down to just two with three to play. Gomez is right back in this. Out to Paul Laurie at the 17th, the par five. Well, you heard it. They all think it's a beauty. Oh, is it ever. Oh, and managing to get some run on these wet fairways. That is a huge drive. At a reachable par five, Tony. Yeah, it's sort of S shape, 516 yards. Got to drive it up here, about here at the corner. If you get a good one away, you can get home. If you get a really good one away, you might even get in there with a long iron, but then you've got that water lurking on the right. You've got to decide whether it's worth it or not. I'm enjoying the tour. It's been good fun. Not been playing so much, which is good because I was trying to kind of settle down a wee bit on the playing front. So, no, it's been great. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So, having found the fairway, let's see how Paul Laurie handles his second to the par 5, 17th. Well, he was confident he could get home with a long iron. He's pulled it slightly. Well, he had ample firepower, didn't he? That's two good shots there. The way he chips, I would put him down for a birdie. Marcus Breer, meanwhile, at the 16th. Chance to make birdie. Doesn't convert. And a little bit of frustration. Must be feeling it now. It's, what, 14 years since he last won on any tour. It was back on the European tour, so he's going to be feeling it, no doubt about that. Now, come on, Paul. I've talked you up. Oh, he's a safe bet mm -hmm. when it comes to chipping. It's no, no crystal ball needed to predict that one. Well done. Almost guarantees a birdie. Let's hear from James Kingston, shall we? I've been away from home for 14 weeks, you know, next week's 14, 15 weeks, and then I'm going home. I'm looking forward to that. It's been a challenging year with... Uh, with COVID and not being able to travel and, and come back as you please, you know. So COVID has dictated for us to stay over here and spend that much time away from home. Certainly dictated for him. He was in a bad way early in the year with COVID, James. He was in intensive care for six days, took him weeks and weeks, had to cancel trips, reschedule everything. And really, we were very, very worried for him. But here he is back again, playing nicely. And that's a terrific eagle chance. Let's catch up with Gary Marks. And a birdie putt at 18 for the Englishman. Pretty steady day all in all. Just the one drop shot on the card. And he's got that for a round of 70. And a top 10 finish. Rafael Gomez, I can tell you, made a bogey at 16, so that's made uh, Bria's job that little bit easier. Three shots clear with two holes to play. Kingston, meanwhile, for the birdie at 17. Nicely done, and that's two in a row. Yeah, nice. Had a double bogey earlier on the back nine, but he's bounced back from that. That takes him alongside Gomez at two under par, three behind the leader, Bria. And this for Paul Laurie to get to two under as well. He doesn't miss too many of those, does he? They'll head across to the closing par three, 18th. And we'll confirm the situation at the top of the leaderboard in the closing stages of the Farm Foods European Senior Masters. Bria by three, and here he is, playing his third into 17. Wow, he's left himself an awkward shot here. Ball below his feet, over the corner of the hazard. 
Oh, okay. Ooh, we'd be quite pleased to see that on dry land. Well, he's got a chance, hasn't he, to make it very comfortable mm. going to the 18th. You'd want quite a cushion as well on that hole mm. to uh, Gomez and his third. Twenty-eight professional wins for Rafael Gomez in his career. He knows how to get the job done. Surely can't be too long before he wins on the Legends Tour. To the 18th then, and Paul Laurie. Some par three, there's 211 yards. What have you done, Paul? What have you done? Oh, I think it might have got knocked back a little bit by the wind. Not bad from that range. Back to 17. Brea for the birdie to get to six under. Four ahead of the rest. Ooh, that's a little bit more left than he would have liked. Up to 18. And Laurie for the closing birdie. And to shoot around in the 60s. I always loved Paul Laurie's padding stroke. And he always had great touch too. Yeah, a little bit disappointed that he didn't hit it, but it's a good effort. Clark Dennis. Seen too much of Clark today, but he's got a chance here at 17. Nicely done, so he gets it to two under par as well. He's never far away, is he, on the Legends Tour? James Kingston. For his par at the last, this would be a round of 70, and nicely done. Yeah, played nicely in Ireland, played nicely in France and Scotland, and in contention again, James Kingston to Gomez. Big putt for him here. If he holds this, he stays two behind. Going up the last hole, that kept him in it. No guarantees on that difficult par three, 18th. Yes, Marcus Breer managed to hole his par putt at 17, so as you say, Tony, it's a two-shot lead for the Austrian, coming to this butte. Yeah, you over water all the way. The water not really in play. It doesn't come up that close to the front of the green. More of a, a mental hazard, unless you absolutely duff it, but, you know, there are still ways to make a bogey or worse here. So keep your wits about you, Marcus Breer. Yep, on to the tee, steps the Austrian. Looked like a pretty good swing, when wafting it back in. Oh, what a sense of relief that is. And what a terrific shot that is. Yeah, that will make the walk around the pond that little bit nicer for Austria's Marcus Bria. Nice acknowledgement from Rafael Gomez. I think he pretty much knows it's done now. Not the best of tee shots from the Argentine at 18. So he's got work to do for his par. In the meantime, Bria to finish in style with a birdie. Well, he knew he had the uh, luxury of at least a couple for it, so he pops it down, holds side, steps away. And Gomez for a closing 74, and this is for second place, so this is an important putt. And he makes it as well. Gutsy stuff from Gomez. Good week's work here in the English Midlands. And these are the ones you want, Tony Johnston, for the victory. <laughs> yes, you could kick it in, but you've still got to get it in there, and that is a fantastic win for the Austrian. He's won on the Challenge Tour, he's won on the European Tour, and now Marcus Breer is a Legends Tour winner as well.
Lovely stuff. Enjoy the moment. Yes, long time coming. But he's been knocking on the door, hasn't he? Lost out to Thomas LeVay in that playoff in Scotland. He gets the W this time by two from Gomez. Thank you. It was really a battle. I couldn't remember even how difficult it is to win. I really played nice for first nine holes today, but then I started to think too much and then made a few bogeys and it was a battle at the end, but I'm so happy. There we go. There'll be champagne next week as the Legends Tour heads to his home country in Austria. That's the end of the show, I'm afraid, but we're off to Austria next. From all of us here at the Forest of Arden, thanks for watching. See you again soon.